Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at a feature called Batch Details Capture Policy. Not exactly sure when this came in. I'm not sure if I just missed it before, and this, but I think I think it's pretty new. Uh, maybe .39 or .40 this came in. If anybody knows, feel free to comment below and let me know. I, I couldn't find a whole lot of information on it, uh, but I, I did kind of notice it's there, and it's kind of an interesting feature. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to, when we have items that have or are associated with batches, or you're capturing batches on them, and you're capturing the vendor uh, batch details, it allows you to control when it asks for those details or when those details should be updated or edited. So well, let's take a look at this uh, new setting in, in Dynamics on the release product. Okay, so let's see what we're talking about here. So I'm in the release products here under item W0002, and it is a batch track item. And just as a reminder, if I go into the item model group here, there's this checkbox that says uh, vendor batch purchase registration. So what that'll do on the mobile device is give you a screen that you can enter in the vendor batch information. So that's current functionality or that functionality has been around a while. But if I scroll down into the warehouse section here, I've got this batch details capture policy. So it's pretty simple if I go into the uh, look at the details of that. Um, I've got always, um, let me just reset my filter here so I get all of the two I set up. So I have always, which um, you have the field here, where you have the choice to either say always or only for new batches. So always appears to use the uh, pre-existing functionality where it just always either asks you for the vendor information, asks you to enter it, or asks you to edit what's already there. And then the only new will um, only ask on the mobile device if, it's a, if you've entered in a new batch. So let me just kind of back out of this here. And I've got this item currently set for always. And then I've got a purchase order here that I've confirmed 127. Let's, let me sh show you what this looks like here. Let me copy this and then we'll go to the mobile device and I'll go to my PL receive and put away. We'll go ahead and enter our uh, purchase order number. And then we'll enter in our item W002. And we'll do a quantity of one. And uh, we'll go ahead and say OK. And then it'll ask me for the batch information. So in this example, I've already got a batch that's uh, batch number 456. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and scan this against the pre-existing batch. And remember, I've got it set to always ask me. So when I go to 456 and then go ahead and say OK, it's going to pull up the vendor batch information that I can go ahead and edit if I need to. All right, so it's going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and say OK here and um, we'll let that continue. So if I go back now and let's change this to, um, to new. Let's go to new and save that. And then we'll go to and add a PO line. We'll add the same item number, 0, W0002. Um, Oh, let me see. There's something messed up there. Give me just a second. We'll go hit add line and we'll say W0002. And there we have it. And we'll do a quantity of one again. I'll uh, save that and then confirm my PO. So remember, now it should only ask me for uh, the information when it's a new batch. So if I go back to my mobile device, I'm still in that same PO. So I'm just going to enter that item number again, W0002. I gotta get the wrong right number. Hang on a second. W0002. And it's gonna be a quantity of one. And then I'm gonna say okay. And then so remember my existing batch is four, five, six. Now I've got it set to only ask me for new batches. So if I go four, five, six, hit enter, it's gonna just say check values and confirm. And then it's gonna tell me to uh, put it do it to the put away location. All right. So to do one more little test here, so I'll do a new batch. So let's go ahead and add a new line. We'll do, do W0002. And we'll pick that one for quantity of one. I'm going to save and reconfirm my PO. And then we'll go ahead and receive that item. So let's go to um, W0002 quantity of one and then we'll do okay to check the confirm the values and now the batch on this one will do seven eight nine I don't have a bet this is this will be a new batch I don't have this one set up so we're going to hit enter 
And then now it's going to ask me to enter in the expiration date. Let's say the expiration date is 07-17-2027. Uh, Hit enter there. And then here we have our, our batch information. So I can come in here and I can say, okay, the vendor batch number is going to be um, 789. Uh, the manufacturing date, use that or not, I'm going to say yes. Country of or origin 2, we'll use uh, Vietnam, which is VNM, or let's see, VNM. Uh, vendor batch date, uh, we'll say that's 06, 01, 2024. Uh, vendor expiration date, we'll say 07, 17, 2027. And then uh, country of origin one, we'll put uh, China on that one, which we'll, we'll use CHN for that. Okay. And then we can back that out, go ahead and say okay. And then that will ask us for the new batch information. And we'll go ahead and say okay to that and we'll do the, complete the receiving. So this one's a fairly easy one to implement. As you can see, it's two options. We assign that option to the uh, release product, and then away you go. You're, you're ready to go, go on this. Really easy to implement. We'll, we'll generally just save the end user some time if they don't need to be editing those batches. If they already exist, you know, why have them edit them unless there's a reason to? So just a kind of a time saver uh, for, for your end users there. So hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, take it easy. See you later.